nice car. So. I'm going to look at the Clash of King. Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the Clash of Kings 2020 by Mantic Games for Kings of War. Mantic have been doing this since 2018, so they've been doing this for quite a while now. They did. They didn't do 2020 because of. King's War 3rd edition essentially, but they did do 2019. Um, that being said, they there's been a bit of a worry of what how Mantic's been doing these in the sense of um, the rules updates in that some of the Clash of Kings for people feels just like a army update and errata and FAQ. It doesn't feel it feels well yeah, it feels like they're just charging people to um fix things as it was. And while the first one that I got, which was the Classic Kings 2018, was basically that and it was pretty poor in fact i got um, i only got it because i essentially won it in the competition i believe i think that's right anyway um I, it yeah it wasn't worth it wasn't worth anything as far as i'm concerned 2019 was so so much better i don't know if a lot of people who were criticizing mantic for what was in the book book 2019 was so so much better they didn't just have um the updates they also had um siege rules and also new units so there was more reason to take it and it was i think it was about 15 quid which at least it had new interesting stuff in it it weren't just army updates at least it was that um they was a 2021 technically that was just rolled into the um battle of Halopy mountains book but that was more of a campaign book the clash king's side was just um army updates it wasn't really anything major and no armies got anything big out of it well updates they did but in terms of new units or anything like that no this book is the largest and it is the most expensive it's 25 quid now for some people that might turn them off and i can completely understand why it would turn some people off the the thing with the updates is that unless you're putting a lot of new stuff in these um books they're not really worth much um Games Workshop are doing similar, but um, that might be a thing for another video because, from what I hear, mm, 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 mm. but hey, anyway, this doesn't just contain um, army updates, although a lot of it is. I mean, how many pages we got this update? Uh, 70. To 212 that's about what 40 it's about 40 38 pages um there's a bit of art in between so it's about what 38 pages in total because there's a lot of armies um that's in 
the very back of the book and I really should start from the beginning but I'll get the weakest quote unquote weakest part out of the way because that's that's not even half the book as it were actually um yeah that's that's probably um a quarter or third of the book um the updates there is at least I believe one new unit in each army I believe just looking at this it certainly looks like it and produced yes yeah 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 practically everything's got technically a new unit although some of them were taken from the um, battle of of Halpy mountains book um, but that kind of means if you take this book you kind of won't need the Battle of Halpy book unless you want to um, do scenarios and use special things from that if you don't you don't need it I think it's alright but even I will admit didn't really need it it's just, it was just nice to have I guess and there's also each army does come with one formation which if you like them great I, I don't care about them but if you do good for you there is a lot of new art as well and a lot of double paged artwork which even it's not worth the admission the price of admission alone but I've said this once, I've said this twice, and I'll keep saying this. Mantic get fantasy with this artwork. They they get it. It's not just a case of they're doing the atypical orcs, elves, goblins, dwarves. They they are just there's this double page of um a troop of um knights or whatever they are just walking along and then this pony wagon and then there's this it's not even a battle scene it just looks picturesque and nice it's just it's just amazing and quite a few of the pages which I didn't know until I was um, looking a few nights ago that a lot of the pages have got the artist's signature on um, I don't know the artist but if I find out who it is I'll put um, somewhere in this video while I'm editing it who who did the art for this because I've said it many times Mantic give them a raise because the artwork is some of the best of the any wargaming company as far as I'm concerned it's I think what they do with Dead Zone is they take the models and edit them enough where they've got that magic sparkle in them but when it comes to Kings of War 3rd edition they've just been knocking it out of the part like 101010 here's a new piece of artwork BAM brilliant here's a new piece of artwork tons of stuff to tell but it's not cluttered and overly busy you can make out what the hell's going on Mantic if you ever think about doing this just do an art, art book with little details on who the artists are and what the pieces of art represent I don't think I've ever bought an art book, but if man did do that, I would. I'd, I'd just, yeah. Uh, just do just do a fantasy one, please, because... Yeah. The, anyway, I'll... Uh, before I gush all over it too much... Uh, God, that man. Uh, does the introduction, as you'd expect. Um then goes into a map of the League of Rodiger and the Shires which the halflings come from 
because one of the major selling points of this book is it contains two new armies the halflings and the rich forged orcs sorry the rift forged orcs um, because um, I think the orcs had a pretty good um, winning t campaign time when Halpy's rift was going on and now there's an offshoot known as the Rift Forged Orcs. They are basically orcs which, yes, they do have shooting, but they are mainly there to be more armoured and hit harder. They are supposed to be mutated, but it's more of a internal mutations, unless you look at some of the bigger things, which, yeah. Uh, they've also got manticores, yeah. Uh, they are a themed list taken from the Orcs, so there's units taken in there, but that will be a separate video, as will the Halflings. But, man, the Halfling, Halfling armies does have an original take, because it have trolls and um, hot air balloons. <laughs> uh, and um, pony-sized mythical dogs that they ride like horses. And a giant mechanical pig. Because. Yeah. <laughs> um, after the introduction it goes into the background of the halflings and the rift forged orcs. Which is nice. Uh, goes into a bit of history. A bit of what's happened with them. What did they do? What are they there for? What's the enemies? Such such like that, who's their allies. Then it goes into technically two mini campaigns which you could play as one seven scenario campaign but it's specifically recommended you should play it as a four scenario campaign and then one three scenario campaign which you know why not more playing options. It then goes into the Halfling army which it goes to a couple of pages doing more detail of the units of halflings. Then it goes into the halfling list proper. Then it goes to the Rift Forged Orcs, likewise. Goes into bits of the different units. Then it goes into the army proper. Because why not? And it should. And then it does something a bit interesting. It changes some of the rules or adds new ones it also changes some of how the spells work it gives rules on formations if you haven't if it's um, not been done before uh, gives a new rule for um, allies uh, allied units may never take unique or limited upgrades there you go it then goes on to the library of arcane knowledge now this expands the magic for Kings of War a lot. This gives three pages of spells which might not seem like much however if you've been playing Kings of War you'll notice spellcasters have a one, two or three in brackets. This is because as shown here properly and I believe it showed in the um, Battle of Halpy's Rift book um, there were spell ca there were spell levels or spell tiers they called here. So depending on the spell, it'll cost so many points to either take it or get a better version. Um, it goes into how you take them, how spellcasters upgrade them, and how the spells work. There are new ones such as bark skin, which if you've played Dungeon Saga. You'll remember that one. Uh, Scorch Earth is, I believe, a Dungeon Saga spell as well. They go then go on to the magical artifacts, which I believe some are ratted and changed somewhat from the rule book, and some are definitely new. And then it goes, like I said, on to the 2022 armor changes, which is just erratas and new units. Um, I'd say when it comes to new stuff, the Basilines probably come off one of the worst. Um, it's not like they don't get out 
good when it comes to updates and whatnot. It's just anything new and surprising, they're a bit limp and lightweight, unfortunately. Which I just pick that out and more because I'm a Basilean player, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So the book itself. If you are not bothered about the um, new armies, if you are just bothered about the update, then it is a little bit expensive for you. There's quite a few armies, and unless there's like an errata or whatnot on the uh, Kings of War, the, the Mantic website, um, it's going to seem a bit expensive. I think it's worth its money because of what's what is in it. The artwork's amazing, the new you the new armies and the little campaign and the new way to use spells, fantastic. Um yeah. on the other side, if you just want the new armies but you don't want the updates, um it's slightly too expensive. I'd argue only slightly I'd probably say 20 quid rather than 25 just for what you're getting um, yeah it's about yeah it's actually about half the book um, for the um, new the new stuff in general um, but that's the thing um, I think it's worth its money because of what's in it but a lot of people might not this I try to look at it from both sides of people who just want the updates and people who just want the new stuff and possibly people in the middle who think it's just great because of what's in it I can I can see it from all three directions um, and that does put things in a bit of a problem and give an example of unless you put a lot of good stuff in just just doing army updates and and just expecting people to pay for it that's going to run out sooner than later and games workshop that might be a thing for another video but oh, oh, at the time of this recording <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 what well, they're trying to pull, hmm, I'm not impressed. Um, it would be the same for Mantic, but like I say, they put so much in that I think, I think it overlooks the updates. Um, it's, the updates aren't really advertised here. It, it's mainly all the new stuff that's advertised, which is kind of what you want to go for if you want people to look at all the nice and shiny stuff and Mantic have been putting the new models for the Reforged Orcs and the Halflings up on the website pretty much from the get-go when this book was on for pre-order um, this book came out um, October time at time recording October 2021 um, but yeah I, I, I think it's really, really good. Um, I can't, I can't complain. But like I keep saying, um, I know some people will when it comes to after paying for updates, and I get it. I get, I get what I get. What you people are saying, um. If if you just want the updates, then look on Easy Army because they do after a bit. I don't know how long actually, but they do update our Easy Army so you can get the units and army up to date without buying the book. There's ways around it. You don't you don't necessarily have to buy the book if you just want that thing, but. I'd, I'd get it. Um, I'd recommend this version of Clash of Kings to anyone. There's, there's just so much in it. 
and I was skeptical at first because of the price of it but I think it's great so thank you for watching goodbye for now